G'day guys, Mackie with the Outer Circle, and welcome to the Sons of Horus, getting started in Horus Heresy. So, Sons of Horus, I really like them. I think they've got one of the nicest paint schemes in the Heresy. Um, unlike their sort of 40k paint scheme, which is a bit bland and boring, the 30k sea green with reds and blacks and you know, gold trim, it's really nice, really pretty scheme. So, they've definitely got that going for them. Rules wise though, they're on the more mediocre end. In fact, they're one of the worst Legion rules. Now, don't get me wrong, this doesn't make them bad by any stretch of the imagination. They're just not an automatic take or one of those forces that when they're put on the table opposite, you just immediately think, oh no, I'm screwed. No, it doesn't work like that. So, let's get into special rules. First of all, the edge of the spear. Units in reserve can re-roll ones on reserve rolls. Very handy. Um, merciless fighters. At the initiative one step, if you've got more infantry than the other guy does in close combat, now keep in mind that bulky, very bulky, that kind of thing will affect this threshold. So for example, if you've got 10 infantry, but the other guy has six bikes, well, bikes are bulky, therefore he has more models than you. Now if you outnumber them at the initiative one step then and you've already attacked then you get to make a single extra attack uh, this is problematic for things like terminators a lot of terminators use unwieldy weapons like power axes power fists chain fists thunder hammers they will often outnumber their enemies but they won't get the bonus attacks so a bit of a negative there now, they also have a rule called Death Dealers. You get plus one ballistic skill if you're shooting at an enemy within 12 inches, if you're firing a pistol, rapid fire, or assault weapon. Does not affect Overwatch, does not affect Snap Fire, and sadly doesn't affect Fury of the Legion. So, a good last stand sort of thing, or good if you're trying to thin down their numbers a little bit before an assault, so you can outnumber, but that's about it. Lastly, bit of pride. You can't benefit from an Allies, Warlord, Trader Leadership stat, which is a bit of a shame because you have a lot of Swarm Brothers, um, five or six off the top of my head. Um, the Salamanders are, of course, the most loved Legion. Sons of Horus and Horus himself, pretty much, they're, they're like second, probably, for the most loved Legion. But yeah, they work best as the leaders of an army and allying someone else in, not the other way around. Now, for war gear, they have the Bane Strike Bolter Rounds. The Alpha Legion have these as well, by the way, and you can upgrade bolters and combi bolters. Uh, and it's sort of like a shitty version of rending. Rolls of a 6 to wound become AP 3, and your range drops down to 18 inches. You can take it on characters, reavers, praving castalax. You can't take it on terminators, though. It's kind of crap. Um, you can also put on Seekers, they exchange their Scorpius Rounds. No, just don't do it. Scorpius Rounds, Heavy 1, Shred and AP 2 are way better than these things. They're another one of those rules, like I was talking about last episode with the Thousand Suns, where they seem to think that certain rules like Fear and Soul Blaze are, are really good and they make them lots of points. Well, it's the same with this. Yeah, AP3 is fantastic at killing power armor, but a big problem has always been, I point this out with 40k, that it's no better at killing things that aren't in power armor than regular bolters. So you shoot at orcs, imperial guard, that kind of thing. It's no better at killing them than an AP5 bolt gun. And if you shoot it at something tougher, like terminators, then it doesn't do jack shit either because it's AP3. So basically you pay all these points, and it can be quite a bit of points, um, to fully upgrade units with it. It's it's shit. Just don't do it. You pay all these points for a weapon that's no more effective than a bolt gun, you know, at least half the time. And you've got to be really picky. Like, you fight something like Mechanicum Rocking Domitar or a lot of vehicles, they become useless weapons that you're paying all these points for for no reason. What, are you going to go shoot in tech throwers with it? They're going to die to bolt guns anyway. So, <laughs> stupid weapon. Um, they also have a relic, it's Cataphractic Primus. It's basically a suit of Cataphractic Armor, it gives you Eternal Warrior and plus one toughness, 
against shooting attacks. Really good, really good relic. Um, Peter, you're only going to be using it in campaigns, right? So anyway, specialist units. They've got Justerian Terminators. These used to be the worst points value unit I can think of in the Heresy after maybe the original Seekers or Destroyers. Anyway, they're, they're right up there for things that cost way too many points. <laughs> um, why do I say this? Because they're originally like 75 points for a two wound Terminator or something ridiculous and in the current meta a Segment Terminator is 35 points so you can see the difference. Pretty good though. Um, solid unit. Definitely worth taking. Interesting fact that in 40k, for example, Dark Angels on their Terminators can take a Plasma Cannon. It's sort of a unique weapon to their Legion, um, instead of an Assault Cannon or a Psycho Missile Launcher. Well, in the Sons of Horus case, they can take a Multi Melter, and it's not actually that bad. Personally, I suggest Heavy Flamers for them because they're such an in-your-face type of Terminator, but yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. They're Terminators, they've got Furious Charge, Chosen Warriors, they've all got plus one weapon skill. You can use them as a command squad if you have any model with Master of the Legion special rules, so that's like your Praetors, your special characters, Horus, that kind of thing. They won't take up a HQ slot or an Elite slot that way. A uh, good way to run them, and they are scoring. So there's definitely that in their favour. Another interesting thing, 12 model count. So you can have a 12 model cap on them. Really helps you fill out your transports. So just you're in, good to go. Another specialist unit you have access to is the Reavers. Um, another one that I think are pretty good. They're a fast attack choice and they're kind of like assault marines dialed up to 11. Very similar to the Despoiler Squad. Um, as troops, you can upgrade them to junk packs. Gets a little bit pricey. Um, they're 5 to 15 man units, you've got outflank, uh, you've got precision shots, precision strikes, lots and lots of attacks. Interestingly enough, you only come armed with close combat weapon and pistol to start with, so you actually have to buy a bolt gun for them if you want them to use it. Don't really need it though, because they are a close combat unit. Um, they can be upgraded with those Bane Strike bolt, gun pis uh, bolt shells I was talking about earlier, but again, they're terrible, why would you waste your points on it? Uh, what else? You can take special weapons, but it's only on like 1 in 5, so best case you can throw like 3 power axes in there or something in case you come up against some, uh, something nasty. Uh, you can take power weapons, power fists, that kind of thing. If you're using power fists, of course, you'll lose your merciless fighters rule. You can take chain axes, which are well worth it. Um, I do recommend taking at least a couple of them because you'll slice through things like Solar Auxilia and uh, Thalax from the Mechanicum list, and plus, plus one strength, I mean, come on. Uh, Melter Bombs, do take them. Do give the Sergeant's Artificer Armor, so that a little bit more tanky. Uh, what else is really good about them? Well, that Merciless Fighter's Rule, let's talk more about that. So that whole, if you outnumber thing, when you put the jetpacks on them, they become bulky. So that's really handy if you're using Merciless Fighters because, hey, you're bulky, you're two models. So a 10-man unit doing an assault counts as 20 models, essentially. Not too often that you're going to be outnumbered on the charge. Therefore, you're going to get that extra attack. Now, you charge in with Despoilers. You're coming in two attacks each, three on the charge, essentially four attacks. Pretty solid, pretty solid. Um... Unfortunately, that's where it kind of ends for specialist units. Originally, Dreadclaws were a specialist unit for the Sons of Horus, but come book two of the Horus Heresy, they were actually introduced into the standard army list. <laughs> so, eh, it's a thing, I guess. Anyway, there's a few special characters. As always, we're not really going to go into the special characters. So, with all that in mind, I think it's pretty much time we look at the models. So first of all, the Sons of Horus Legion Command. This is an interesting set because you get a banner bearer who you could use as a command squad banner, that kind of thing. And you get Melagurst the Twisted. That's actually the model for Melagurst, who is one of your special characters. Now Melagurst can take a banner. 
sadly though, this banner is designed for this arm. And from memory, that arm is actually sculpted to his torso. So yeah, if, if you wanted to have that banner on him, you're actually going to have to do a lot of cutting and probably a bit of green stuffing. and bit of a bit of a shame, because he's really good with the banner. But yeah, essentially this is two HQs in one, because you could run this as a Legion Herald with the banner. Run another guy as a Praetor, or just a Centurion of some description, or another Consul. Pretty handy to you. If you run, say, a Chaplain, or another HQ, they're really good in the Sons of Horus Force, and can really back up things like those Reaver units, because you're going to get that hatred on the first turn of combat, and you're going to have a bajillion attacks. So it works really well hand in hand, good synergy. Another HQ choice, one we don't go to too often, the Damocles Command Rhino. Now the reason I've included this is, well one, you have an interesting orbital bombardment that you can perform. It's strength 8, AP 3, but twin linked and lance. So reduces armor that it hits to essentially armor 12, which is interesting to know. Um, keep in mind, if you do fire that at something with a flare shield, like a Spartan or a Land Raider, or a Mechanicum tank of some description, like a Krios or a Triaros, the negative one strength modifier will become a negative two because it's a blast weapon, therefore you'll only be strength six. So even dropping armor down to 12, chances are you're going to do nothing to it. So not worth taking, um, sadly, in that capacity. That said, Damocles Command Rhino allows you to modify your reserve rolls by plus one or minus one, which is very handy. Now, remembering back to when I talked about the Legion rules and the tip of the spear. So, let's say you roll a two. Modify the roll, thanks to your Damocles Rhino, down to a one. Oh, I get to re-roll that. Get another shot at that reserve roll, don't you? Because that's what a modification does. It modifies the number you rolled on the dice doesn't have to be a natural one that you rolled, it could be a two. And that said, you could always just modify the two, plus one, up to a three, and hey, my reserve came on. Or maybe you rolled that one, and you're happy with rolling a one, you don't want your reserve to come on yet. So you say to yourself, hmm, I think I'll turn it into a 2 with my plus 1 modifier, so that reserve definitely stays off until later in the game, because I want it to come on later. That's up your sleeve. That's variety. That's tactics. Um, Sons of Horus are an army that rewards great tactics. The other little bonus you get is uh, a modifier to your Deep Strike Mishap rolls, so it gets a little bit less likely that you're going to, you know, blow up a unit that Deep Strike's in, so that's handy. Oh, and a six model transport capacity, and you can of course upgrade it with you know heavy flamers, heavy bolter, that kind of thing on the sponsons. Handy. So the Sons of Horus Legion support cadre. This gives you five reavers, or Catulan reavers if you want to paint them fully black. Gives you a Contempt of Dreadnought, always take a Contempt of Dreadnought. And I, su I do suggest taking it with the twin assault cannons because yeah, anti-air. Never can have enough anti-air. And they're really good against infantry anyway. They're sort of one of those all-rounder weapons. Uh, another set of weapons I really like is Twin Volkai Culverins. Um, and Justerian Terminators, you get five of them. Now again, thinking back, you have a command squad back at the start. Consider running your Justerian Terminators as a part of the command squad. That way you free up an elite slot and you've got a scoring unit there pretty handy. So, all good units. Moving on from there, upgrades, upgrades, upgrades. There are lots of upgrades for the Sons of Horus. Shoulder pads, helmets, torsos, the works. Not a huge fan of the helmets. I do think they look alright on sergeants, but they're a little bit derpy, in my personal opinion. If you like them, nothing wrong with that. I'm never going to tell anyone that the way they hobby is wrong. I will always just say what I prefer. The torsos, they're fine, they're fine, they're adequate. Not the greatest sculpts in the Heresy, especially when you compare them to like what the Death Guard got or what the Emperor's Children got, Ultramarines, that kind of thing, have some really good upgrades, these not so much. 
and the same with the shoulder pads. You get this sort of gang glyph, but it's just the same pattern with the same chain and the same symbol. It's a bit of a lazy sculpt where they've just repeated the same item over and over again. It, you need a little bit of individuality. You know, it's a bit of an uncanny valley thing. Uh, the Terminator shoulder pads, though, are quite good. So you can put these onto the Terminators, of course, that you might get in a Betrayal at Kelth box. And hey, for those who don't like working with decals, Betrayal at Kelth, put the Sons of Horus shoulder pads on your Terminators and you're laughing. And that'll give you two sets of Terminators in your force, your Justerian for your command and another squad of Terminators for your elites. With the Sons of Horus Task Force, of course, yes, you get a whole bunch of these helmets and shoulder pads and that kind of thing. I don't think you need it, to be honest. I'd just get the standard Betrayal at Kelth from Games Workshop with none of the Forge World upgrades. You're never going to use them all. You won't need them. Now, Legion Outriders. I think one thing that you do kind of lack with the Force so far is a bit of AP too. So consider a squad of Outriders and consider giving them plasma guns. Now, twin plasma guns are quite expensive and outriders are quite expensive in general. Probably need a points reduction of 15 points or something like that. But they do have scout. Um, they do have outflank uh, because they have scout. They do have a close combat weapon. They are bulky models. In fact, I think they might even be very bulky being bikes. So you, if you use them, you can outflank light up those nasty units with two plus saves like enemy terminators or maybe a special character they might have lurking in the back like a master of signals light them up fuck them up and then charge them your bikes you move fast you hit hard you're relentless charge in get those bonus attacks good to go while we're on the topic of fast attack and getting there and charging in anvilus pattern dreadcore drop pod put your reavers in it for God's sake, put your Reavers in this and drop it down their throat. Remembering, you have a no scattered deep strike zone, not that it really matters anyway, of 24 inches around that Damocles. And this is an assault vehicle. You deep strike in, you count as a flyer in your turn, makes it really hard for it to get destroyed, and the next turn you go into skimmer mode, move up to 6 inches, then throw your troops out and let them charge. Hell yeah. And then once that's done, don't think it becomes useless. This thing goes back into fly mode and starts flying around over the table, flaming things. Yes, it has a weird flaming rule where units that flies over it, it actually strikes, which is pretty cool. If we're going to cover drop pods, we should probably cover the big cousin, the Charybdis. So in this picture on screen right now, you can see a tiny little drop pod and next to it is something the size of a basketball. Yeah, it's expensive, but damn is it big and is it good this thing has the same transport capacity as a spartan it's covered in these sort of pseudo havoc missile launches and has all the same bonuses as a regular anvilus dreadclaw this is what you want to put your justerian or your terminators in probably with your warlord um, i've seen people run horus and a squad of justerian in this and that is the most terrifying thing to jump down in front of you it's got decent armor and five hull points flying vehicle. Yeah, tough as rocks. Of course, there is also another heavy support choice available to you. And once more, I'm going to suggest the Sicarian Arcus. This is, yeah, the most powerful overpowered unit probably in the entire Legion as a Astartes right now, um, excluding Primarchs, of course. Points for points, this thing will kill anything. It fires a ridiculous amount of shots. It's got great rules. It's fast. It hits hard. It's got good armor. Everything about it. It's the complete package. Again, not something I suggest too often, but given that Sons of Horus are a more elite faction that gets some of the cooler toys, much like the Space Wolves do, they're favored. Yeah, Horus is going to have one of these. Um, he is the War Master after all. It's befitting. And on top of that, Again, they're not the greatest of legions. Like you compare their rules to like the Thousand Suns in the last episode to get like crazy bonuses for all their units. Sons of Horus, they need to play to their strengths. There is nothing wrong with using a stronger unit like this to buff up your army to that level. I mean, there'll always be that guy out there who runs three of them and you know 
you hit him over the head with a chair in the parking lot afterwards. These things happen, you know. But, um, yeah, don't be that guy. Lastly, decals. Really good decal sheet. Lots of unit markings. They look fantastic when they're put onto models. Only downside is no Lunar Wolves markings. There used to be a decal sheet for the Lunar Wolves, which is the sort of pre-Heresy, pre- I guess Sons of Horus, the pre ulanor scheme. Um, hard way to describe it. But basically, the Sons of Horus changed their colours from this sort of white with black trim to this sea green after Ulanor and after a little incident with the Interrex species. And there's also some lovely etched brass. I myself have used this to convert up some miniatures for a friend, and it looks great. Really helps to tie in different units, like, you know, cut these little eye symbols off and glue them onto the chest of sergeants, for example. Shave any power cables or that kind of thing out of the way, or belt buckles, whatever. Replace it with these. Looks fantastic. Anyway, I think that about does it. So, to wrap up, Legion Command Squad, Sons of Horus, Domus Patton Damocles Command Rhino, at least one Sons of Horus Legion support cadre, go to if you really want to go hard, because every one of these is a good unit and works better when there's more of them. Maybe some upgrades if you're so inclined. Betrayal at Kalth set, because Betrayal at Kalth is brilliant value for money. Some Legion Outriders, not a very common unit, but a very good unit. A Dreadclaw, a Charybdis, a Sycoran Arcus, and of course decals or etch brass to help you fill out your force. And if you really want, there are also Rhino Doors, Land Raider Doors, that kind of thing, if you're so inclined. That's the Sons of Horus. Thank you all for watching the episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next time.